Welcome to Congo. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is the second largest country in Africa and it lies in the tropical heart of the continent. Our journey started in the east on the Rwandan border and the city of Goma. I was guiding a team of 16 travellers and our aim was to travel into Virunga National Park in the hope of encountering some of the critically endangered mountain gorillas before climbing Niragongo, a vast, highly active volcano which looms over the city of Goma. Back in the city, myself and the team had arrived after spending 10 days travelling through neighbouring Burundi and Rwanda. First, before we departed for Virunga, it was time to stock up on supplies, change some money and spend some time getting to know the locals. <laughs> Once we were rested and ready, we met with our local team who would be helping to arrange our logistics. Due to security concerns and the ongoing presence of armed militia groups in the region, we were only permitted to travel during the day and under armed escort of a local guard. Throughout our journey, we'd be traveling with the incredible Virunga National Park Rangers. Those are the guys employed to protect the mountain gorillas and preserve this vast area of pristine, ancient rainforest. So, in our convoy of Toyota Land Cruisers, we left behind the city of Goma and headed north towards Virunga National Park. The armed men in unmarked clothes, terrible driving conditions, and the stream of UN peacekeeper trucks added a sense of foreboding. Eventually though, after four hours of driving, we made it to a remote park ranger's outpost near the village of Bunagana. As we signed in at the park ranger's office, we noticed that we were the first tourists to visit this place in over six months. Then, along with our local guide and team of trackers, we ventured out into the rainforest. Along with neighbouring Rwanda and Uganda, Congo is one of the last homes of the critically endangered mountain gorillas. It's said that only a thousand or so of these animals remain in the wild, and so locating them safely in the forest is no easy feat. Fortunately, we were in expert hands. Somewhere in the forest, our local tracking team had found the family of gorillas. Now, communicating via radio mic, we had to locate them. As we trekked across cornfields and towards the tropical rainforest, the skies burst open with a tropical thunderstorm. After two hours of trekking through the storm and wondering if we were going to see the mountain gorillas, an armed man appeared on the horizon. It seemed he was waiting for us. After a brief moment of tension, it was all handshakes, and he told us that we were on the right track, and now we were just a few hundred meters away from the mountain gorillas. At this point though, we knew we needed to turn into the dense, thick primary rainforest. It was time for our lead guide to hack through the bushes and find our final path to the gorillas. We made our final approach. We were asked to put face masks on. These are required to minimize the risk of spreading disease to the endangered mountain gorillas. Finally, we came to a stop and we heard movement in the forest around us. At last, we caught our first glimpse. First a mother and a baby, and a young adolescent. And then, the giant silverback. He was devouring everything in his path. As we watched him, we noticed a huge wound on his shoulder, perhaps the scar from a recent battle. We kept our distance, and he seemed relaxed. Until... <coughs> just a warning. After spending one hour with the majestic mountain gorillas and with the return of the tropical thunderstorm, it was time to leave. As we made it back to the cars, our armed guard informed us that it was too late to make the four hour drive back to Goma. It was unsafe, he said, to travel at night around here. So instead, we spent an unplanned night in the village of Bunagana and shared amongst the group what few snacks we had. The next morning, we were back on the road and on our way to the base of one of the world's most active volcanoes, Nirugongo. 
Here, we rendezvoused with the rest of the team, met more Virunga National Park rangers, organised our kit and set off up the volcano. From our starting point of around 2,000 metres, we'd need to climb on steep trails 1,500 metres to the crater rim. Armed guards will be with us every step of the way. Here in the jungles of Virunga National Park, armed militia groups are known to have a huge and unpredictable presence. After around 500 metres of climbing, we made it out of the rainforest. Here, the vegetation became thinner, allowing us some views of the incredible surrounding landscapes. The trail was loose, crumbly volcanic rock, so we made our way up slowly, eager for what lay ahead. Along the way, we had to watch out for hidden vents, which disappeared deep into the abyss. Finally, after five hours of walking, we reached the huts which lie in the crater rim. Here we will be spending the night. But before going into our huts, it was time to see what we'd all been waiting for. Almost a mile across and half a mile deep, the scale of Niragongo's crater is almost impossible to comprehend. Way down below, at almost 200 meters across, Niragongo's lava lake is known to be the biggest in the world. We thought that seeing this crater during the daylight was impressive, but after nightfall, it was a whole new level. We spent the night watching the lava lake bubbling away before filling our bellies with warm food and settling into our huts. Then, as one final treat before the end of our Congolese adventure, it was time to get up for sunrise. Until next time, Virunga. <laughs>